Every night, when we look up at the sky, we often see the moon slowly gliding across the sky. But what we see is never quite the same. Sometimes it's just a thin crescent, sometimes a half moon, and on some special nights, it appears as a big, bright full moon. And then the cycle repeats, going back from full to half, then crescent, and finally disappearing for a night or two. This repeating pattern of moon shapes is called the lunar cycle, or more specifically, the phases of the moon. It happens because of how sunlight falls on the moon as it orbits around Earth. This entire cycle, from one new moon to the next, takes about 29.5 days, and it's called the synodic month. Even though the shape of the moon seems to change, there's something else that doesn't change at all. We always see the same side of the moon. No matter what phase the moon is in, crescent, half, full, or new, we're always looking at the same face. We never get to see the other side from the Earth. To understand this, we first need to know two important motions of the moon, its revolution and its rotation. Rotation means the moon is also spinning on its own axis, just like the Earth does. It takes the moon about 27.3 days to complete one full spin on its axis. Revolution means the moon is moving around the Earth in an orbit. And here's the interesting part. It also takes about 27.3 days to complete one full circle around our planet. So both the rotation and the revolution of the moon take exactly the same time. This means that as the moon revolves around the Earth, it rotates in such a way that the same side always faces us. This phenomenon is called synchronous rotation or tidal locking. When the moon formed some 4.5 billion years ago, it was spinning much more rapidly than it is today. Earth's gravity causes a rocky tidal bulge in our companion, which means it is lemon-shaped rather than a neat sphere, with a pinched end facing our planet. Back in the moon's fast-spinning early history, the location of that bulge kept changing, shifting across the surface much in the same manner as our ocean tides. This effectively acted as a break, gradually slowing our companion spin speed until it fell into equilibrium with its orbital period. At this point the hemisphere facing us became locked in place, 